Hey, how about a little rotational kinematics for your day that ends in Y? Alrighty, so here's a little bit of a rotational kinematics to help you with your homework 10-1. A little bit of this you've already done, but the second part will be more newish. Alrighty, guys, we've talked about angular displacement. Regular displacement's in meters, miles, kilometers. Um, but for angular stuff, we use revolutions, we use radians, we use degrees. We don't, in physics, don't use a lot of degrees for displacement. We can, we have, but we tend to prefer the radians. It makes our conversions a lot easier. But we also use revolutions as well. So sometimes we start the reference line like on our positive x-axis over there and, and go from there and we go counterclockwise from there as we move around the circle. Um, so let's keep on rolling. Alrighty, so remember how we do our angular displacement. This could be degrees, could be radians, and this could be um, revolutions. But the way we find that amount is by taking this distance per this distance, and that automatically puts that into radians. Okay, so if this s happens to be the exact same length, the distance is the same length as this r, that's a 1 for 1, which is equals 1 radian. That's what a radian is. It's basically when you take the radius off and you bend it around there. That equals 1 radian, which does happen to be 57.3 degrees. And, yes, you can fit 6.28 of these in a circle. So there's 1, then there's 2, then there's 3, then 3.14 to get to there, or pi radians in this half a circle. Then to get to the other half, it's another pi, or what's better than 1 pi, guys? Well, 2 pi, or 1 pi with ice cream. Either way, you get a full circle over here, and that's 2 pi over there, with or without the ice cream. Um, so that is angular displacement, which is a measurement of this arc distance divided by the radius. That's how you get your angular displacement. All right, guys, pop quiz. I know how much you guys love the math. Automobile tire has a radius of 12, 42. I don't know where the 12 comes from. I really don't. It's, it's, it's night. Um, 42 centimeters. If a car drives 10 kilometers through, what angle has the car rotated? Alrighty. So if we come down here and we click on my little pin thing. And um, so remember um, the whole theta here. Here's the little mouse drawing. And that theta thing is your S for distance over your radius. Okay. Um, so what angle has you move, have you moved through? Well, the car's gone 10 kilometers. Okay, so there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm going to do it this way. 10 kilometers. No, I'm not going to get that crazy. I was going to do it crazy. I'm, I'm, it's, yeah, it's late, guys. I'm just going to make it 10,000 meters. And then the radius is still the R, not the distance is 0.42 meters, that's a 2, and there you go. Find the ratio of those two, would you? All right, let's do the little clickety-clack. 10,000, 1, 2, 3, divided by 0.42, because they're both in meters, you have to be in the same unit so they cancel out. And you end up with um, 23,800. Goodness gracious, what units would that be in? Radians. Oh, okay. They're asking for revolutions. Whoops. All right, well, I did the, the, the first one here. So that's 24. Fa okay, it's 23,000. Excuse my slop. 23,000. 23, 800, we'll call it. Alrighty. And that's in radians. So if you want to go in revolutions, let's do a little conversion. That's in radians. Okay. So if you want to do revolutions, you want to put the revolutions on the top. And in one revolution, you got your two pi radians, right? Alrighty. 
So it's that number divided by your 6.28, which is 2 pi. And then I got uh, 3,007. Whoops, that goes up here. Wrong amount. So that's that answer. Then up here, because the radians canceled out, I forgot to write out radians over here. It's pretty sloppy. It's, it is what it is. Um, 3,000. 790 revolutions. Okay, you want to do some degrees now. Um, for fun, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go degrees from the revolution. There's 360 degrees in revolution, right? Alrighty, so there's all your conversions in one... So dealio, and I'm going to put that answer right down here. So that answer divided by 1, because you divide by nothing there, it's time, divided by 1 revolution, so it's times um, 360, and that's just a, a huge number, 1,300,000. Three hundred and sixty-five, and I'm tired of writing numbers. Okay, that's why we don't do things in degrees. Okay, I put a little degree symbol, and I'm done with that business. Okay, click on that, and so we can be done with the pen thing. All righty, whoo! So there it is: three thousand nine hundred revolutions, three thousand seven hundred ninety. Um, what that says, um, same as my answer. Remember, that's a three. Doesn't look like it, but it's a three. And there you go. There's your one million. All righty. On. Word. Okay. So now doing some angular speed. We did our displacements angularly. That's a little bit of review. Angular speed is your angular displacement per the time. Okay. So commonly we use radians per second. Sure, you could use revolutions per minute or revolutions per second. Those are common as well. But in physics, we do like the radians per second, this middle one. And that's a Greek omega. Remember, we're going Greek because we're out of American letters. Okay, it's the way it is. It's your final minus initial. So it's your change in angular displacement per the time. All righty. But a handy thing to use is when switching between tangential velocity or the distance per time your speed and your angular speed is you just take it times the radius but you have to be in radians per second to do this because that is in that's the radius so as long as you're in radians per second um you can take that times the radius per radian Radians cancel out, and now you're in meters per second. So that's a little quick fix to switch between the, the speed, linear speed, or tangential speed, and an angular speed um, if you're in, in radians per second. Okay? All right. Probably got to have an example come. Oh, so this is a little new then. Guys, we're out of American letters, so for acceleration angularly, we're using a Greek alpha, the fish symbol. So it's your rate of change in angular speed per time. So it's your final minus your initial. Okay. Those of you calculus people, it's your d set dw per dt, and there you go. Which is the same thing as your rate of change of your angular speed per time, which is your radians per second per second or radians per second squared. Okay. So instead of meters per second squared for, for, for linear velocity, for angular acceleration, I'm sorry, meters per second squared for a linear acceleration, um, this is your angular acceleration is a radians per second squared. Okay? Um, so every point has the same, if it's a rigid body, if it's a rigid body, every point has the same number of turns per second or radians per second, and that means every single point has the same number of radians per second per second that it's accelerating through. 
Not true in terms of the actual speed, because the speed is faster on the outside of a spinning object than the inside, and the outside is going to have a greater acceleration than the inside. However, in terms of the angular acceleration on a rigid body, everything has the same rate of change in angular speed per second, and every spot has the same number of radians per second or revolutions per minute. Okay. So here's the quick fix. You've already learned about displacements, velocities, initial velocity, final velocities. Even though in college types we don't put the F, we just leave it as is. There's your tangential acceleration or just your linear acceleration. There's your time. Time doesn't have a direction. Okay, it's the only non-vector up here. That's why it's just t by itself. Okay? Um, but these are all vectors. The displacement, the velocities, acceleration, those are all vectors. Um, so this is the linear on the right. These are all the angular on the left. So, so linear, linear displacement, angular displacement, linear velocity, initial velocity, angular um, uh, initial velocity, linear final velocity, um, uh, final angular velocity, Angular acceleration, linear acceleration, and your time. And there's not really an angular time. It's just plain time. It's scalar. All righty. So these formulas you've all seen before. This is the first one on your equation sheet. This is the second one on your equation sheet. And the bottom one is actually your third one. It just looks a little different because there's a times 2 in front of the A here, which gets rid of those 2s. But other than that, it's the same. So these, um, this one and this one is still there. And these two are the same one. You might be saying, hey, hey, what's up with the whole final thing? I wouldn't even worry. I didn't even know they snuck that in there. Otherwise, I would have deleted that one because that just looks a little confusing when you're doing the final velocity and a negative there. I wouldn't even worry about that stuff. In fact, let me get a big old fat X on there. And don't even worry. About, sure, it's I see it's in there. It's going to be confusing to add one more thing onto there. Okay, pay no attention to what's behind the X. All right, nothing to see there. And I think it's still there. All right. And this one on the top is not in your equation sheets, but we talked about it all the time. It's um, when you're doing the average stuff. Okay, so when you find an average velocity, you add the, it only works. Guys, remember, all of these special equations only work when you have a constant acceleration. This is kinematics. This stuff only works. All of it only works with a constant acceleration. If you don't have a constant acceleration, you don't even bother with this stuff. Okay? This only works if you have a constant acceleration, like when you have a constant unbalanced force. So remember, this stuff here without the T, this stuff right here, this is your um, average velocity. Okay, so the x per the t is your average velocity. So that's not on your equation sheet, but that's one we use quite frequently. So you notice, guys, the only difference is one's angular, one's linear. Everything else is the same. Instead of a v, you got a w-looking thing. Instead of an x, you got a theta-looking thing. Instead of an a, you got a fish-looking thing, which is your alpha. Okay, it's just all Greek is all it is. So it's the same symbols for rotational kinematics. It is linear. You just go in a circle. You don't have meters, you have radians. So for all these, you have meters and seconds. For all of these, you have radians and seconds. In some cases, you have radians per second squared. Here you have meters per second squared. Here you have meters per second. Here you have radians per second. So other than that, they're all the same kind of formulas you use. So it's nothing new, nothing to memorize. It's all the same stuff we've been working with. All righty. So, um, and there you go. So those are your common ones. That Those are the ones that you have on your equation sheets, on your um, AP equation sheets right over there. So there's your one, your two, and your three that look just like that. And you also have this. It's not going to be one, two, and three because they're further down on there. But those are the same equations you got there. The only difference is instead of a V, you got a W looking thing. And that's a fancy V, I know. 
Um, but then you got the the Greek W there and the fish and all that other stuff. That's the only difference. Guys, we're going to pause there and come back some examples in a second. All right? See you on the other side.